Across the great state of Iowa, it is the Simon Conway Show. As you know, uh, people who want to be president tend to swing by. Delighted to welcome back to the state of Iowa, Nikki Haley. How are you, ma'am? I'm great. It's great to be back. It's good to uh, it's good to have you back. It really is. And um, why are you here? Let's start there. Why are you back in Iowa? What are We've you doing? We've been here for three days. I am not going to be that candidate that comes in and does a rally and leaves. We are going to touch as many hands as we can. We're going to tell people why we think we can save the country and the importance of loving America. And we're going to keep coming back. We'll be back again in a few weeks. And we're going to keep doing this to earn the support of the people of Iowa. I was really good at this, right? I mean, uh, I think the Democrats made a huge mistake because Iowa is really good at it. I know the Democrats have put South Carolina first. You must like that. I, we not understand really. that. Not really. That's not what we, you know, I, I think it goes and confuses the situation. I think it's Biden really knowing that he can't win Iowa, so he pushes it to South Carolina. South Carolinians didn't need to be the first mm-hmm. in the country country we're proud of being the first in the south and we've always owned that but i think the democrats of iowa should have fought harder for that yeah they they also are in a quandary now because state law says we have to be first so that's right so they got a choice of breaking the party rules or these state law it's going to be fascinating to see what happens if you're an outlier who's uh, going to challenge biden within his own party this would be a great place to come because the media is going to come running if you do it absolutely <laughs> absolutely all right um look, the country is in really dire straits um now uh, the big story this morning is of course uh macron of france saying hey china we don't have to follow america anymore I mean, it's mind-blowing. That is literally our oldest ally. You know, he's always tried to be like the the seasoned diplomat, and he just totally fell on his face with this. The other European leaders are criticizing him. You know, if that's how he wants to be, don't come back to us for anything. I mean, this is something you don't forget. I'm one that takes names. You don't forget. And if he wants to go, you know, get chummy with Xi, he's forgetting the fact that a win for China is a win for Russia. And here he's been asking us all to go get together and fight Ukraine, fight for Ukraine, yet he's going to go sit there and tell, you know, China that he's not going to go and support us and they're in our challenges with them. I think it's a huge mistake, but we won't forget it. It is a huge mistake, but does it also say something about the Biden administration? It says everything about the Biden administration. The fact that world leaders see us as weak is because they smell blood in the water. It started with Afghanistan. You see it with the fact that Biden was slow to move on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's the fact that we've had this massive hacking where heads have not rolled yet. It's the fact that Russia went and shot down a U.S drone and we did nothing about it it's the fact that we had a chinese spy balloon go over the united states and collect intel and biden just let it happen every dictator knows they will never have a weaker president than joe biden and it's why we can't get to 2024 fast enough that balloon apparently was doing figure eights i'm I'm serious you know that balloon didn't go over south carolina because we have beautiful beaches it went over south carolina because we're a military state right and biden allowed that to happen he handed that to china on a silver platter we do appear to be weak we appear to be weak uh uh, from that perspective we appear to be weak now from the currency perspective they're trying to uh, uh downgrade the dollar it's a national security threat. We have always had national security because the dollar has been dominant. And the fact that not only is the dollar getting weakened because of all the spending that Congress is doing and all the debt that we are getting in and the fact that we're having borrowed money to make our interest payments, but now you go and you have international partners that are choosing not to trade with the dollar. That's incredibly dangerous for us because that's been the one thing that's kept us the leader in the world. That's why China's making the move on that. That's why the Arab countries are working with China on that is because they want to weaken America further. I'm glad we got that answer. I've asked so many people, why does it matter? And and you're the first one to give me a real answer. So so I'm grateful for that because, you know, to to me going to the the store, the fact that the dollar isn't the dominant currency in the world, why does it matter? That's an answer. Absolutely. It's it's a total national security threat. So I'm I'm grateful for it. I I really am genuinely grateful for it. Uh, Okay, this, uh, this Republican GOP race is uh, not like one I've seen before. It's kind of quiet. It's uh, not as rowdy as uh, we would have expected it to be by this point. Um, You've got one very loud person in the room and then everybody else and it's uh, it's very very different how are you navigating this we are doing it the traditional way 
by touching hands. We are in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina constantly. We are doing town halls. We're answering questions. We're touching hands. We're not doing any shortcuts with this. I am the only candidate that's actually working it here in Iowa. I'm the only candidate that's going around all of Iowa and meeting the people and answering the questions. And we're going to do that, whatever it takes. That's what we usually do in South Carolina, so I'm used to it. And you want to earn the support of people. You don't want to just fly in, do a rally, and leave. You don't want to just fly in and and take pictures and hold a baby well and think that you're going to get the votes. That's not how it happens. You have to go and do the hard work. We've got a country to save. We've got to pull our country out of this socialism creep. We've got to pull our country out of this defeatism that we're seeing. We've got to get our country strong again. And this is for the sake of our kids. If we don't do this now, God help us, because we can't take four more years of Biden. I know so many people that are genuinely depressed about the state of our country. I've not seen that before. You know, for the first time in history, 78 percent of Americans have said they don't think that their kids will have as good of a life (laughs) as they did. That's unacceptable. We can't have that. I mean, the reason I am running is my parents came here 50 years ago to an America that was strong and proud and full of opportunities. I want to prove to them that they made a good decision. I'm doing this for my husband, who was a combat veteran, for his military brothers and sisters, because I want them to know their sacrifice did matter. We do cherish our freedoms. We do love America. I'm doing it for my daughter, who gets married on Saturday, and I see how hard it is for her and her fiancé to own a home. I'm doing it for my son, who is a junior in college and i see him writing papers of things he doesn't believe in just to get an a that's not us that's not america we've got to take this back and i will tell every one of your listeners don't complain about who you get in a general if you don't play in this caucus well first of all i did not know your daughter was getting married on uh, on saturday congratulations uh yeah i've done that twice doesn't get easier by the way saying saying goodbye seeing them off i know <laughs> that's I not know. get easier walking down the aisle the whole i still nine see yards her in I pigtails i can't believe it yeah oh and uh yeah there'll be tears yes yeah yeah <laughs> probably from your combat vet uh, yes, husband that as well is very true <laughs> Uh, anyway, congratulations. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, a you. wonderful day. Uh, and thank you for spending time in Iowa before that's happening, because uh, that's uh, that's kind of unusual. So, so thank you for that. It shows how hard I'll work. Right. No one will outwork me. There you go. Let's talk about Iowans and this, because uh, I've witnessed this, I think it's my fourth cycle uh, now, presidential cycle, and we're just really good at it. All right. We ask really basic questions. They expect honest answers. Uh, they're not uh, starstruck by anybody who comes to, to visit. Uh, and it's, you know, excuse me, I need the ranch. It would be a quite common thing if you happen to be in a restaurant <laughs> to if you're in the way of the ranch. <laughs> they'll, yeah. they'll ask you to get out of the way. So that's good, right? It's real I America. Appreci- I actually appreciate it because I think that this is serious and Iowans take it seriously. Yeah. And they vet and they're not easily fooled, right? Nope. So they are looking not just for a problem solver. They're looking for authenticity. They're looking for someone that's really to, ready to get in the fight and fix things. And, you know, I've been a two-term governor that took a double-digit unemployment state and made it an economic powerhouse. I was a U.N. ambassador that didn't deal with one country but with a hundred. 93, and I took the kick me sign off of our backs. I've got the executive experience and the foreign policy experience. And people of Iowa see that. They appreciate that. They're asking the tough questions, and I'm giving them the honest answers. Well, um, and, and uh, do you feel the message is getting across? I absolutely feel like the message is getting across. You know that when you go and you do a town hall and people come up to you and say, I'm going to go tell 10 people I'm going to vote for you. That's when you know you're making it. This is a story about addition, and it's not addition about votes. It's addition about getting people to buy into our love of America and the fact that this is not who we are. We are better than this. We need to go back to a country that's about faith family and country that's who we need to go back to that's who we are as americans we can do this we can do this but it's going to require courage courage for me to run and courage for everyone in iowa to understand you have to play in this caucus don't let the media tell you who you should be for don't let the media tell you who you should be against and understand that the polls you see today are not going to be the polls you see on caucus day yeah, they, they do understand that part. You know, uh, you are doing it the right way, the traditional way. Uh, some people bypass Iowa. That's not smart. No, uh, it's not. Ask, ask non-president Rudy Giuliani about that. Uh, you shouldn't take any Americans Because he for went granted. to Florida. He, he thought he could wait. He thought he could wait. Uh, the guy who did it the right way, Rick Santorum, he, he was here pretty much for a full year in and out the way you're doing it. And he won. 
Yep. So, uh, yeah, you are doing it the right way. It's interesting. Uh, we'll we'll uh, look forward to welcoming you back on a fairly regular basis. And uh, I, I like to be able to talk to you about news of the day. As I say, that Macron thing is a huge story uh, today. It really is. So uh, thank you for doing that. Enjoy your, uh, your stay this time. And we will see you again soon, all right? Thank you. We'll see you back soon. There you go. Nikki Haley, ladies and gentlemen. Five.